Glass morphism. I'm gonna show you how it's done and how we can build it here in Webflow. So the basic idea is we are creating these layers that have this frosted or glass-like effect. Um, so we're gonna be stacking layers on top of each other. Maybe the background does not have the effect and then the middle one does have the effect and then another layer on top of that does not have the effect. Um, basically the idea is just to make mix and match combinations to make these cool looking semi-transparent glassy or glossy like looks. Um, so there are basically two ways, well, there are lots of ways we can do this, but I'm going to show you two ways um, of how we can do it in Webflow. The first way is the correct way, and the second way is kind of the janky way with just using Webflow's built-in tools, but both of them are actually really easy to do. So this is what we are going to create. I know it's not the prettiest thing in the world. It's okay. Uh, that's not the point. The point is just to show you how to create this uh, glass morphism effect. Now, the background has to be kind of bright and it has to have lots of different colors or else the effect doesn't really work. So let's go into Webflow here and I'm just gonna show you what, we've, what we're working with. Um, so the hero section um, is basically 100 viewport height. Um, it has a background image, nothing special, okay? Inside of it, we have our child element, uh, div one here. And what we have, it's basically 86 viewport height, um, seven viewport height margin, just to make it scaled down a little bit. It's absolute and it's full, that's important. It has to be both of those. Um, and then it has the color, which I'm gonna take out now. That was in there just so you could see it, visualize it, what we have going. Um, and then a radius of 20. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our div one, we're gonna copy and paste it just cause I wanna keep some of the settings. Um, I'm gonna come in here and delete all of the text and the nav bar and the button that was inside of it. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna duplicate the class and I'm going to call it backdrop. We have to remember this name, um, I'm gonna call it backdrop one actually. We have to remember this name because we're gonna use it in just a second here. Remember it has to be absolute and it has to be position full because we want them stacked on top of each other. Um, and then everything else should be good. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our page settings, click page, click the gear icon, scroll down, and inside our head tag right here, we're going to paste this CSS snippet. You can go to glassmorphism.com and f basically it's a CSS generator for glass morphism. You can copy that code that you get there Paste it in here. Um, you can play around with it a little bit if you like. Make sure that the style tag and end, uh, end tag is here along with the brackets and your um, your class here. Now we call this backdrop dash one, so make sure it matches. And all we're gonna do is click save and we are going to publish it. This is the first way. This is the correct way of doing things. And this is all you need to do. Um, that CSS snippet basically has all the settings we need for this glass morphs morphism effect. Um, and it actually looks pretty good. We could tweak it a little bit here and there, um, but you should have a pretty basic idea. Um, again, we have, just to give you an overview, we have our div, which is absolute, which has our text and all of that, uh, text buttons, navbar on top, and then underneath, um, we have our backdrop one, which is taking on the settings of that CSS snippet we just gave it. Again, this is absolute and full, um, so they're, they're the exact same height. So let's learn how to do it with uh, Webflow's built-in tools. What we can do is we can duplicate the class and we'll call it div two. Okay, we're gonna keep all of these settings the same. We're gonna come down here and add an image. We're gonna add the exact same image that is in our uh, the background, that hero class. Um, so we're gonna choose image, we're gonna add um, this image, and like I said, it's a little bit janky. It doesn't line up perfectly, like you can see this square um, doesn't line up perfectly, the circle doesn't line up perfectly, but it kind of reminds me of like those brick built, those old brick buildings that have the glass windows. You look through them and it kind of like, you know, you look through them and it's actually pointing this way, or you look through them and it's pointing that way. Um, that's kind of what it reminds me of, but um, okay, let's continue here. Let's add another layer on top of that, um, on top of the background image, and we're going to add a solid color, and we're going to make it white. Okay, so now we need to do what we need to do is we need to add the blur, right? It needs to have this blur effect. So we can add a blur here. Let's make it like let's make it like ten, um, and that actually looks pretty good. It looks pretty close to what we had before. However, what what we're missing is that like edge. You know how glass kind of has like the light reflecting off the edge. That's what we're missing. So what we can do is we can go up here. We can duplicate div two and we're gonna duplicate the class so that we're not affecting div two, we'll call it div three. Um, we can delete these 
and we are going to add a border and we're gonna add a one pixel white border. Just one pixel, nothing special, um, but it's not working. Um, th so what we need to do is we also need to get rid of the blur because the blur is actually affecting this border, which we don't want. So if we get rid of the blur, we now have this nice white edge. It kind of looks like glass. So if we publish it, it's not gonna look exactly the same as the other effect, but it's gonna look somewhat similar um, and it's gonna give us a different effect. We might wanna like bring up the brightness a little bit on this div too. Um, but I mean, we could spend all day tweaking this and making it look better um, and playing around with it. There are so many applications I've seen, like you can use this for icons. Um, you can use this for, I've seen a lot of credit cards um, I've seen email form submissions, like the email form submission is, uh, like has the glass morphism background, kind of semi-transparent. Um, I've seen it for mobile phones. You can have like part of the mobile phone have this transparent look and other parts of it just plain white. I mean, there's so many applications. So this should give you a really good starting point. All right, well, that's all I got for you today. Um, we'll see you in the next one.